the VPA has updated the precinct structure planning guidelines for new communities in Victoria to raise the bar on the process and the outcomes we seek for our plans. Now, more than ever, we need the best possible tools to help plan for a growing Victoria while enhancing our world famous livability. The guidelines lift the standard for outcomes sought in our new communities to create new neighbourhoods that are prosperous, livable and sustainable. They also provide the tools and pathways to deliver our plans with greater flexibility. Over the last decade, the VPA has developed significant expertise when it comes to planning for place through our precinct structure plans. We've also gained significant insight into how to create distinct and diverse communities that cater to local needs. Our new PSP guidelines provide an adaptive, flexible and responsive framework that support innovation and best practice planning outcomes in new communities, incorporating the principles of Plan Melbourne and embracing the 20 minute neighbourhood. Planning frameworks need to be clear with quantifiable targets and principles to ensure delivery of intended outcomes. Plans must also respond to the diverse challenges faced by new communities, including housing affordability, access to jobs, public transport and services, climate change, and the long-term impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Our plans provide the scaffolding for how we live, work, and play in our new communities. And the VPA's new PSP guidelines are working to meet these challenges and address Victoria's future planning needs. This is why our new guidelines are also supported by a PSP reform agenda focused on the three Ps, policy, process, and product. Our policy focus is the new PSP guidelines, which set the right outcomes for new communities. For process, we've developed PSP 2.0, a stronger and more collaborative approach to preparing precinct structure plans alongside our partners. And for product, we've designed a new compact PSP template that define key outcomes and promote flexibility with site responsive innovations in the post PSP stage. These measures will improve on the ground outcomes and streamline the process wherever appropriate, which is essential for Victoria's economic recovery. While process and product are both critical, it is these guidelines that will underpin the work each of us do to plan for new communities in Victoria's growth areas. That's why we're excited to introduce the updated precinct structure planning guidelines for new communities in Victoria. The new generation of PSPs prepared under these guidelines will raise the bar by setting new metrics to ensure the creation of affordable, sustainable and livable new neighbourhoods that can adjust to Victoria's changing needs. Living locally is the core principle underpinning the updated guidelines to help plan resilient 20 minute neighbourhoods where tomorrow's Victorians can access more of their everyday needs closer to where they live. The new um, PSP guidelines that uh, have been introduced in Victoria are really a fundamental building block to create the sorts of communities that we all want to live in. What the 20 minute neighbourhood will do and what these guidelines will do will allow people to live healthier lifestyles but more sustainable lifestyles. The guidelines raise the bar for Victoria's new neighbourhoods by setting new targets for traditional owner engagement, for the density, diversity and choices of housing, for affordable housing, for greener and cooler environments, for sustainability, and for coordinating the infrastructure and services that new communities need. The guidelines include greater recognition of the value of Aboriginal heritage in plan making and a commitment to improve processes for collaborating with traditional owners. They also set increased targets for residential density and diversity around town centres, community facilities and services, open spaces and key natural features. This will help make our new communities more walkable and allow for greater housing choice. It's all about living locally, giving people the ability to meet most of their daily needs within a 20 minute walk from home. It will also ensure there are adequate populations around town centres to make them more economically viable earlier, to support more cafes, restaurants, services and businesses for new communities. 
Our new plans seek to deliver more affordable housing, housing that is not only affordably priced, but also costs less to live in by reducing energy and transport costs. A new 30% tree canopy cover target for streets, laneways, parks and open spaces will improve greening and cooling in our new communities, making them more sustainable, climate resilient and beautiful. The guidelines also drive better sustainability outcomes through better integrated water management, through conserving landscape features and biodiversity, and through emphasising placemaking for local, unique character. But of course, a good plan needs to be backed by good delivery. Our new guidelines set out how we will continue our active engagement with government departments, service providers, councils and utilities to input their forward plans and for them to identify and define the essential infrastructure they are responsible for providing. We will be working with government, councils and infrastructure providers to inform the decisions they make about building the infrastructure our new communities need. Our plans will identify where and how development is likely to occur to assist the development industry, councils and infrastructure delivery agencies to make the investment decisions that will shape tomorrow's communities. The guidelines also set out how we will explore strategic partnerships for planning, funding and delivery so that we can underpin innovation through and beyond the planning process. Leadership in the form of establishing targets is absolutely important. And it is the means by which we can ensure that everyone who's involved in the, the development process, that they actually play their part in, in delivering the, the combined aspirations of the guidelines. I think setting uh, new standards or higher standards for new communities is really important as a process that over a period of time, lifting the bar, I think, is the key concept here that um, you know, you don't just sit on your laurels, you, you try and aspire to making things better over time. And these new guidelines are certainly a, a step up. The guidelines provide a new minimum standard for what PSPs will achieve. They lift the bar on outcomes in our new communities by setting a new base case for precinct planning, putting collaboration at the heart of PSP preparation. This collaborative approach requires stakeholders to actively inform placemaking outcomes so we can work together towards a shared vision. We're also excited to introduce a new innovation pathway. The new innovation pathway will allow tailored responses to place-based challenges that deliver above and beyond our new raised standards. These innovations will be rewarded with a bespoke PSP process and product. The new PSP guidelines raise the bar for everyone. The innovation pathway will create opportunities for councils and landowners to go even further. This is not merely making room for innovation, but actively encouraging it. I think one of the major benefits of the innovation pathway is it's going to help us push ourselves even further. These guidelines are a fantastic first step in taking us to a new place for creating healthier, more sustainable and livable communities. But what the innovation pathway will allow those developers who really want to push the envelope a little harder to take us to the next level, to show us what's possible, to show us what works and doesn't work. The absolute strength of these guidelines that there is an acknowledgement that things don't have to be done the same way. There is an acknowledgement that if someone comes along with, with an idea that, that has merit, that there is a pathway to support that idea. We're providing the planning tools to deliver new communities across the state. This includes new consistent targets for outer Melbourne and a replicable process across designated areas in regional Victoria that ensure the intrinsic local character of these places is protected. These tools will help improve productivity and speed up the supply of land to market, critical to our economic recovery. More work is required to ensure we achieve the intent of the guidelines, as these plans come to life post the PSP phase right through to the permit process. The VPA is driving a range of initiatives aimed at enabling full realisation of the guidelines. 
This includes some changes in the planning and building systems to ensure new homes, town centres, public parks, streets and community facilities meet our community's expectations. Our PSP reform agenda will truly lift the bar in planning for Victoria's newest communities. I want to take the opportunity to thank our partners in government and industry for their contributions in developing the new guidelines. We look forward to continuing our work as we move to the implementation phase together. The VPA is here to help you understand the new PSP guidelines. We will be preparing a series of guidance notes to support PSP preparation and we'll be offering training to councils, consultants and developers across Victoria's growth areas and regional cities and towns. Find out more about the PSP guidelines on the VPA's website.